beast, didn't they? Chuff to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrate on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Called him mullet. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. Um, I'm in my banana suit because the weather is shockingly bad. It's cold, it's windy, it's forecast heavy rain and I can't use a beach shower. So I've got the full Salwester type waterproof gear on. And where am I? Well, I'm at Paul Harbour again. Unfinished business. What have we got in here? So there was a whole piece of what happened the last time I fished here. So I fished and I caught using a short snood three hook flapper and I did catch using the pop-up rig. Both of which we'll be making on the channel very soon. But first and foremost, I've gone home, rethought, and I wanted to come back and try again tonight. So I've got plenty of ragworm, plenty of fresh bait, and I've made 60 pound rig bodies just with swivels trapped between beads um, to the same design that was Shane's rig so that's what we got for that I'm using five ounce plain leads tonight instead of four ounce plain leads so it's all been revised I've thought it all through um, I just feel like I've got unfinished business here and you think well where are your hook snoots Mark well this was one aspect, so deep hook flounder, you've got to take your time, bit of care to unhook them. And being attached to the rig, even if you detach the rig, just the complication of having everything around you, um, complicates life. So in each of these packets, I've got three hook lengths with detachable snood links, snood clips, Gemini snood clips. And I've upped the strength of the line to give it some stiffness. 20 pound amnesia and I've upped the size of the hook to a size one hook rather than I think I was using size fours I think I was using fours I check but when I compared them at home I've gone up in hook size and snood strength and I've changed the rig body so with that in mind they're already on the rods behind me, waiting for the water to cross, cross the flats as we're speaking, and it's rushing over at a right old rate of knots at the moment, so I'm almost ready to start baiting up. Um, I want to be here for as the water covers the actual mud flat. I think that's an important part of flounder fishing, the initial part of the flood and tide. Um, it's cold tonight. I am genuinely quite cold. Got all my warm gear on, got my biggest, strongest waterproof gear on, and it's quite leery and the black clouds in the distance are pretty ominous so I'm going to need it so out of those pack of snoods that I made up we've got three sets in each pack just like that, look. three sets we take one and the first thing I need to do is with my baiting needle just check to see which ends the receiving end. That ends the receiving end. And for my normal fishing, I would usually go in behind the head and feed it in. As always, you know, anyone that's a regular follower of the channel, I always pull faces and stuff when I'm doing this kind of thing. Um, and then we feed the ragworm onto the baiting needle. God, excuse me, it is proper cold tonight. The other night we come, I actually commented that despite it being winter and everything that was going on, it wasn't particularly cold, but it's the complete opposite tonight. It's Baltic. Um, so once you put the worm on the needle like that, there is a small hole in the end. You offer up, just put it down, I can't see it now. It's dark in the van, even though the light's on me. Um, you put that in the, the hook point in the receiving end. You pull the snood taut. You can see where it's quite useful having a um, detachable snood now. And it's a case of feeding the rogue worm round. He says trying to get one that's fighting him. It's a butch one this one. It's angry. And there we go. 
one ragworm on a snood. We get the next one, so we're doing three snoods. Um, again, just double check that I've got the right end. Um, through the back of the head. I like to leave a little bit of the head sticking out because I think it adds movement. And that's what you're actually trying to achieve. This baiting needle's not actually that sharp, it's quite blunt. And if the worm tenses up and starts fighting against you, just pause, just pause and wait. Wait for him to relax. I'm sure he's not too keen on having a baiting needle through him. Um, all the way onto the baiting needle. Next hook snood. Hands are cold. It, I am struggling tonight. There we go. Pull nice and tight. Pull nice and taut. Almost like you're trying to bend the needle. And then you feed the ragworm round. Just catch that so you can see. Feed it all the way round. And detach the needle. There's the next one. Loads of movement. Just clean the needle off. And I can hear that water rushing behind me so... Oh, where's my last hook snood gone? And then my my third hook snood. Again, it's rinse and repeat, but this is what we're doing tonight. This is the game. The game we are playing. And I'm already liking the fact that I'm using detachable hook snoods tonight. It does make for very convenient baiting up. It will make it a lot easier for unhooking fish. If we're, if we're lucky to catch fish, that wasn't good. <laughs> that, that worm's just ejected himself all over the inside of my van. <laughs> so that is three hook snoots, all baited up. <laughs> Where did that go? I'm gonna have to clean that up in a minute. Um, let's have a look, see what we got then. So we are now Three hook snoots, baited. The rig body's on the rod, weighted. Waiting to go. That's what's gonna go out. I'm gonna get those clipped on and get them out. And we are fishing. Move this one across. So that is super shallow. There must only be four to six inches of water out there. So that one's out fishing. I'll get another one prepped, rinse and repeat, the exact same again. Clean up the mess in the van. <laughs> keep my hands dry, keep my hands warm. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. You can see that the water is just on the flood. It's just coming in as we speak. So the rods are rigged, both of them are out. And the tide is just flooding. It's got another 10 or 15 feet to go until it's to the wall and then it's got to rise another foot, two foot from there. So we've caught it right on the initial flood. And the rod tips are setting the tide as we speak. And we're fishing. Looking for the first bite of the night. <laughs> I've got my hood up, I've got my hat on. It's, it's cold. Oh. Bit of movement on the right rod as well. Oh, there you go. What was that? That's a bite. There you go. There's a bite on the right rod as well. So I'm pretty sure I might have a fish sat on the left one. And there's certainly something going on with that right one. Just wind into both of them a little bit. Just to 
see what we get. Handy having that street light there it means you don't have to have the head torch. Just point the tips at the at the street light. You got some free lighting. There's some interest out there. There's something out there. It might just be little tiny school bass. You do get played with the really, really small bass. Um, they will strip baits. Um. There's definitely something going on with the with the right rod. I think I'm going to give that one. Give that one a reel in, give it a bait check as well, just to see what's going on. If there is something on it, it's very small. It was the smallest of bites. A bit of a rattle. we got oh no we're straight in with a flounder there we go first flounder of the evening <laughs> let's go and get this one unhooked what a stunning fish right this is where the detachable snood comes in I can just have that snood off and go and unhook it at the van in the light so there's the fish. Ooh, nice white underside, look. And there he is. I'm gonna go and get this one unhooked. <laughs> so there we go. One nicely unhooked flounder on the revised rig. I'm gonna get this one straight. I'm not gonna bucket him or anything tonight. I'm not gonna do like a flounder count, but that's flounder one. I'm getting back in. Get him released. <sighs> And I'm pretty sure I've got one on the other rod. <laughs> Let's get, I need to get myself sorted out. Right, gonna get this one out quick as I can because I'm pretty sure I might have one on the other rod. Get this one cast out. been slack lined on this one so yeah I've been slack lined it looks like I'm in on this one as well <laughs> I'm like a banana <laughs> just move the camera looks like I'm in on this one as well there's a bit of weight to it oh yeah it's a fair bit of a thump to this one what have we got on here oh. Oh, <laughs> a double shot. <laughs> no wonder there's a bit of a thump to it. A double shot. <laughs> two flounders. <laughs> Three for two, my first two casts. <laughs> oh dear. Well, there we go. Right. Unclip these snoods. That makes it so much easier. <laughs> okay. And there we go. <laughs> Three for two. So that's flounders two and, th uh, two and three. So they're going straight back in. Um, 
that rig's doing the business, absolutely doing the business. Look at those bad boys. Absolutely, that light's in the way, isn't it? Whoop, get my head up. <laughs> Look at those. They're hard to see in this wind, but... I was just seeing if I had a bite on this rod. I'll just give it a bit of movement to see what happens. Because sometimes the artist literally just sat on it, you know? They take it, the initial, if you miss the initial rattle, then the fish is just sat on the bait. It's always difficult with flounder fishing, especially when there's wind like tonight, when it's windy, is to actually spot the bite. The tide is high enough that I've got myself a bucket of water now, so I can't help but be into the wind, guys, so I apologise for the wind noise. But yeah, I've got myself a bucket of water, so I'll be able to unhook and, and keep the fish nice. Those other three went straight back because the tide was high enough. I was a bit, a little bit worried to start off with that I wasn't going to be able to get them back all right. All three unhooked nice using that wire with the very, very small eyelet on the end. Um, just in through the gills, turn the hook around, unhook, pull back and then feed it through. Um, yeah, they all unhooked. I learned that from watching um, Fisho's, Fisho's channel. He, he's championed that sort of method for unhooking. Um, and it's really good. It's really good. If you watch Fisho's channel, all credit to the guy. That's where, that's where most of that's come from. Pretty sure there is one on that right rod. Yeah, there's something going on there. Let's have a look. Because I've got some fresh baited snoods ready to go. No, oh, maybe not. I might have lifted up too early for that one. Which is always a risk. Yeah, I think I've lifted too early for this one. Unless it's a small one. Keep an eye on that rod, because that's slackened off a bit, isn't it? Just put a bit of a bend in it. Yeah, right. I lifted too early on this one. Some fresh snood, uh, fresh baited snoods on that. That's the beauty of these detachable snoods because I've already baited up the replacement, so I can just unclip all these, put that to one side. Just gather up those, look, <laughs> and I'll go and swap them out in the van where it's nice and dry and there's plenty of light. And as if by magic, there's the fresh baited ones ready to clip on. Let's have a quick look at that one. This one fired out. Just watch the van. I'm going to come around this way actually, <laughs> rather than put a five ounce lead near the van. I'm fishing braid straight through, no shock leader, so it makes for easy casting. There's no knot to worry about. It doesn't catch any weed on the on the knot either, which is for this kind of fishing is good. It also gives really good where well, the best bite indication you're going to see is from braid just because it's direct and no stretch um, but yeah that's what we're up to there's a few people turn up now um, just speaking to a guy a bit further along he's he watched the video today and he's come here today because he watched the video the last video
Let's see what we can get, eh? Three already. Not exactly the target species, but we get this one back. certainly picked up and you can't help the bycatch but tiny little school bass like this because it is a nursery area and I did get reminded that on my last video so I'll reiterate it I'll get this boy unhooked in fact he's really lightly hooked try not to get my finger as well there we go hooks out and get this little boy back I've got to have the camera low because obviously it catches the wind and tips over. Yeah, detachable snoods. They're working well. It's good stuff. So there's really only one thing that guarantees an early pack up and that's lightning. So I don't know if the camera's going to catch it. You might see the sky light up behind me, but we've got a storm front coming in. Just check the wind, the wind apps and the weather apps and it's, it's being followed very closely by lightning. So both rods still fishing. Um, I've had three flounder and a bass. Three flounder and a bass on a rig that I wanted to use and prove it works, it's good, it's good stuff. Um, but I'm gonna call it quits. So if I feel a little bit hurried or I seem a little bit hurried and rushed, yeah, I'm getting the flock out of here. <laughs> As a shepherd said to the sheepdog, let's get the flock out of here. Um, yeah, really pleased. Good short session, two hours worth of fishing. Um, weather's grim. I'm hoping that you're being shielded by the worst of the weather from the wind. Um, but yeah, so all that leaves for me to say is tight, take care, tight lines, happy fishing from me, from here, and the lightning. <laughs> Must be crackers. Um, yeah, it's time to go home. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now. Run away!